Hi there, my name's Heidi Vella. I'm with Chris Lambert, Global Product Manager for Exploration Products from Beauart Longyear, an international mineral exploration company. We're going to discuss the state of play in the mineral exploration market, considering the current challenges and potential operation opportunities. Uh, nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. So some say the energy transition is driving a potential sustained upswing in commodity prices that could result in increased exploration activity. How do you characterize the current and near future exploration market? For example, what do you see as the new and old challenges and opportunities? Well, it's clear the energy transition uh, has created a very positive environment for exploration in the medium and long term. Uh, we see in the short term that there's still uh, volatility, as has always characterized exploration. Uh, there can be a lot of competing interests for exploration budgets. And so uh, at any given time, um, even the outlook is very positive in the medium and long term. We don't anticipate any downturns, but the short-term trajectory is not um, as, as immediately up as, as some might expect. Uh, given where the commodity prices are moving to. Um, the challenges associated with that are, uh, we know there's a lot of opportunity, um, but as has been true in the past, uh, exploration budgets tend to move quickly. And the old challenges um, really continue on. In the past, uh, it takes time to uh, put more equipment in the field and drillers and uh, responding uh, quickly is probably the biggest challenge in this market. And that's true of both the contractors who provide the drilling, uh, such as Borlanger, as well as providing uh, the tooling and making sure that we can keep up. And that was exhibited in the 2021 uh, upturn that was associated with the recovery from COVID and increased exploration budgets. So we're in this state where we know the long-term outlook is really strong. And yet in the short term, we have to rapidly uh, respond uh, to both a little softening and the potential for significant increases at the same time. I think the new challenges are really around uh, labor. Um, it's getting, I would say, increasingly difficult to find people that uh, want or, or are willing to live, at re live in remote sites, uh, work in difficult outdoor conditions. Um, and it's, uh, it's a challenge uh, from a training standpoint, as more of the experienced people retire in the industry. I think really that's the biggest challenge is, is around labor um, and responding to upturns in the market. So um, what role does technology and technology service providers such as yourselves play in you know, addressing some of these challenges and speeding up exploration projects and reducing costs while you know, always maintaining quality? I think we have a large role to play. Um, there are a number of factors it used to be in this industry that there was uh, it was very physical, and more and more uh, companies such as ourselves are focusing on automation, reducing the heavy lifting requirements, um, making things easier physically to expand the labor pool. Um, likewise, we're also looking at uh, automation, reducing the number of operations and steps and moving from uh, really a job that was manual labor into one that's uh, more focused on, on skills managing the drilling process. It's really in transition though. I would say that that's going to take some time. It's really an upgrade in, in fleet and equipment that has to occur. Um, and many companies are on, on that path to make things easier and expand the labor pool. Uh, but there's still a lot of equipment out there that's, uh, you know, doesn't look any different than it would have, would have 30 years ago, say. So it's really both the technology companies providing the products that allow for um, less physicality in the drilling process. Um, and then it's really the investment in the contractors and the mining companies to make sure that 
that's uh, that new equipment's brought online. Okay, so you mentioned automation there, and um, so so how important is innovation in this space? And what are there any any other technology advancements you're working on? Um, and are there any challenges in bringing these technologies, including automation, to the market? Uh, y yes, there are definitely challenges. Um, we're working on automation in our uh, rigs. So one of the, uh, on our roadmaps are making drilling equipment uh, more and more hands-free, meaning handling the coring rods, the different tools, uh, making that process so that the rig handles all of those and eliminating any of the heavy lifting uh, in, in that process. So we we are incrementally changing our rigs to offer uh, hands-free. So in the latest rigs that we're offering, you won't have to touch the coring rods or the sample retrieving tools, the inner tubes. Um, we're also offering more of the automation from the software side to dri help drive productivity, um, drive some unattended drilling as well for short periods of time to allow shift changeovers and things. Um, so innovation is, is critical in making the jobs less physically demanding and also increasing the productivity of, of the current labor force. Um, it, it both expands uh, the pool and reduces the uh, amount of people required in the process, which is critical to being able to support growth in the industry. And do you think in making the, the job less physically demanding can also attract sort of more people to the industry, do you think? It sort of I, I think so. That, the, and, uh, yeah, and, and that's been a focused priority um, in our drilling services group really to look at uh, changing the culture as well to go with that. Um, you know, it was um, many years ago, it would have been um, uh, very fraternal, uh, call it a fraternal culture, and making it more inclusive, uh, less physically demanding. And really that expands the labor pool. I mean, we have a, uh, a direct goal of increasing uh, uh, the number of women that participate in our workforce uh, significantly and making it more accessible both culturally and physically um, is a high priority for the industry as as well as ourselves. And uh, I, I guess it also increases safety as well. If you have a yeah, mind. I mean, I, I guess I, I didn't mention safety, but really that's always first and foremost um, from our perspective. Uh, when we talk about hands-free, it's not just the physical aspect of the job that we're trying to improve. It's also trying to eliminate the opportunity for injury. The reality is on uh, older designed rigs where there's a lot of physical handling, um, hand injuries are one of the number one safety concerns. It's one of the things that happens most frequently as you're handling uh, large tubing. Um, so, that is definitely a priority. And when we look at our uh, our tooling and our equipment, that's actually always the first priority to see how can we eliminate uh, the opportunity or the chance of an, uh, of an injury. At the end of the day, we want to make sure our employees, uh, you know, go home as healthy as they came to work in the morning. Um, and, you know, that's, the focus of our, that's the number one focus of our innovation. Um, when we look at productivity and quality and expanding the workforce, uh, those actually come behind safety. Safety is almost uh, unspoken uh, because it's ubiquitous within uh, uh, not just our company, but really within the industry uh, as a whole. Some of our latest technologies, for instance, uh, we have some in-hole tools that eliminate something that's called a spear point. It actually looks like it sounds, um, and so could, res depending uh, what happens on site, if it were dropped, can cause injuries. So that that was a recent focus uh, focus improvement within our tooling space was to get rid of that uh, that 
feature, product feature that has been around since really the 1960s. And um, just to sum up, um, so what do you expect to see in the exploration market going forward? Well, I think I, all the signs are that the exploration market will be uh, at least steady, but with a significant growth potential. Uh, I think we're going to continue to see um, trends uh, of automation um, to make it easier to conduct drilling, uh, make it safer to conduct drilling, and expand the labor pool. It's really a necessity because um, over time, the the people willing to engage uh, out in remote areas in all kinds of weather is declining. And so we need to expand the labor pool. I think the market will still have some volatility because of how exploration is funded within the mining community, um, but the long-term trend is up. Uh, and um, for the providers, the service providers and the tooling providers, such as Bore Long Year, you know, our focus is definitely going to be uh, making it more accessible and reducing the costs of it to the mining companies. Um, anything we can do in that regard will uh, make it uh, will help drive uh, more more exploration activity in the future. Okay, and um, that's been very interesting. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. And you.